we pray. Gracious Father, as we dive in at Genesis chapter 3 this morning, as we see ourselves as Adam and Eve, Lord, we thank you how the chapter ends of a great gospel message that we will win in the end. So Lord, open our ears, clear our minds, and hold our hearts dearly to you this morning to nurture us for this upcoming week. In Jesus' name, amen. We've been diving through the book of Genesis, and a lot of times as we start reading the Bible, we always start with Genesis, and we never get through Leviticus and, and those other books later down in Scripture. But it's fitting that we always go back to Genesis, which means in the beginning. Now, we've talked about some tough, Topics already in Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2. And I want to invite you and challenge your faith in the belief that the world has to what the Christianity um, that we stand upon. In Genesis chapter 1, we talked about God is the great designer. He is the great creator. In this Christian church, we celebrate the six days of creation and a young earth. Now, I said last week, we can agree to disagree. As long as we walk together and study together in the words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Then in chapter 2, we dived into what marriage is, is between a man and a woman. And how everything works as we follow God's design. But as we see today in Genesis chapter 3 is that we don't always follow God's design. And this is why we're here on a Sunday morning as we saw the hot air balloons once again flying over the beautiful God's creation here in Prescott Valley. But how throughout the day our hearts will get dirty. Why is it, Lord? Why, Lord, did you put that tree of good and evil in the garden? Why did you have a door that we could enter and do our own thing? Why is there suffering, Lord? Well, let's dive into chapter 3. And as we take a look at that first verse alone, now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. What's your favorite animal? What's your favorite animal that you would, if all some of that animals are talking, that you would talk back and not even second guess it? I know for like Natasha Voss, boy, if she could talk to the dinosaurs. She will love it. That's what she wants to do. That's one of our high schoolers, and that's her journey in life, is to study the great mammals of the past. And we do believe that dinosaurs existed with man, uh, with Adam and Eve, all the way um, through those early parts, and we'll talk more about them later on. And you can find dinosaurs in Job chapter 40 and 41. For me, it's dogs. I love dogs. In fact, we had three of them that came through our campus. We had the water slide out here for God's will kids. And always, it's always a danger we see a stray animal coming across. But one of them was named Thunder. And Thunder was a big dog. But he was so friendly. This tag said New Jersey. And you just wanted to talk to him. Did you come from New Jersey looking, traveling all through the country? Or did your folks just move here? But the friendliest dog. And of course, we tied him up and waited for the police officer to pick him up later that day. But it's something. Is that here Eve probably was drawn. It was one by her favorite animal. It was a serpent. Whatever he looked like, with had arms or legs or four legs or four arms, he had something. He had limbs, as we find. And so definitely it was a time as we talked to our pets or to our plants or whatever you like to talk to when no one's around. You know, we are made to have relationships. But really the question is, is that Satan came into that animal to trick Eve. A lot of people think that Genesis is a bunch of fables. But boy, if you take it literally, I tell you, your life and God's design will get you through some amazing tasks in life. You take the Bible as God's word. It's amazing. What about Satan? Who is Satan? And I have scriptures I'm not going to look at today, but it's for you. When I put scriptures in there, it's a backup what we're talking about in other scriptures. But from Isaiah 14 to Revelation 12, he is an angel. Of course, a fallen angel. God designed love, an incredible design of love, 
that that love is you can love or not to love. That's how you design families and relationships. That's why the tree of good and evil is there. That tree and evil was not poisonous. Everything that God made was awesome. But we have incredible freedom. And I said last week, that tree of good and evil, as Martin Luther said 500 years ago, that was their altar. That was a holy place. Anything that we can't touch becomes holy, doesn't it? Don't touch those brownies. Don't touch the lasagna until it's not. Don't. We have great respect and care. And so as we take a look at Satan had freedom as all the angels in Revelation 12. You can see a battle going on with the great archangel Michael against Satan with a call the dragon and also the serpent here. Also here Satan and devil. Satan is a, means opposer. Devil means accuser. So these are his nicknames. And of course Lucifer in the Latin phrase means a light barrier. That scene had a huge role, just like you just saw the hot air balloons. I appreciate John Boss. You got to see his sight as he had a time elapse of all the hot air balloons blowing up. It's like a minute and 50 seconds. And you can see on YouTube a John Boss sight, all those balloons rising up. Satan had the role of the morning star to welcome. Angels have tasks and duties. But along the way, during the six days of creation in those early days, Satan decided, you know what? I'm not going to listen to somebody else. I direct the sun in the morning. I direct, I'm going to have, I'm going to be my own God. And he had a war. One third of the angels fell. As Michael defeated those who decided not to follow God. This is important. God gives us all good things. Adam and Eve had all these trees and enjoyment of plants and animals. God was saying, I just don't want you to touch this one tree. I want, I want to show you a relationship. What relationship is all about. It's about love and respect for each other. And that tree was a relationship with God. To have God in your life or not to have God in your life. And so when Satan came, he started to take down the belief of God's goodness, his trust. He started to challenge, raise doubt in Eve's mind saying, hey, God's not so good after all. You could be just as good. But God left that tree of good and evil, the tree of relationship with them out there saying, don't touch it. Trust me in this. It's kind of like this, kids. Taking a test. We have to take tests through life. Why do we take tests? Because tests helps us to develop our skills and what we do in life from day to day. God tests us as well. But there's Satan who tempts us. And what happens is if you're on your desk taking a test, that's a test that God is giving you to gain wisdom and strength for the upcoming. But Satan comes in that classroom and he has a maybe a person next to you that wants to be your friend and wants to be like. And so he moves his test sheets over. He knows that you're struggling and he moves that test sheet over to the corner of his desk so you can look and see what his or her answers are. Testing and tempting. God does not tempt us. But Satan comes and he tempted them. He persuaded them not to take God seriously and to doubt God's goodness. And so here's one of the warning signs for all of us. When we start engaged in temptation, when we start talking with that temptation, that's a good sign to walk away. Eve knew that animals don't talk. They named the animals. They were part, all the animals also just started to talk, but she was also a trance. She should have just walked away and had them too. Like we should walk away when temptations come to us, when Satan starts to reason with us, that's when we get into trouble. And so they take the fruit, first Eve and Adam as well. Eve was deceived. Many theologians said Adam wasn't deceived. He just went along. Maybe he came later. Who knows? They're both at fault. But you know what? We would do the same. We, if we were there, unfortunately, 
And God designed us to have a door in the house just in case we wanted to do our own thing. So this is the challenge that we have today in our journey with our Lord and Savior. God's plan, the tree of good and evil, the tree of loving, respecting, and worshiping God. That's that tree, what it is. It's not a poisonous fruit. It's, God makes everything good. But our sin, as Satan jumps in there, is our selfishness and pride. And when we start worshiping ourselves, start loving ourselves over God, what happens? Shame comes in. We start looking at ourselves. When you look at yourselves in the mirror, <laughs> as we get older, what's our first several thoughts? When we focus on our skills and our weaknesses, what happens to us? But when we focus on others, we forget about how we look or our weaknesses, but we start helping others. And that's how God designed this great love, to love Him and others. And so we sin with our pride, and so what happens, we hide from goodness. And then we start doing the blame game as we see along the task, blaming other people. When we want to be God ourselves, then we have to take our punishment. And this is the powerful gospel of Jesus Christ today. Is that 3.15. The kind of death, it wasn't a physical death, but it was a spiritual death. As it says, we know that we have passed from death to life because we love each other. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Talking about spiritual death. We're not having a relationship with Jesus Christ. We're just having a relationship with ourselves. And we are doing and we're drowning. But this is the great gospel message here. The great gospel message is that here comes the Son to save you and I. Each seed is Jesus Christ. And as a snake, he is going to stomp on Satan's head. It's unfortunate that that snake, that animal, lost his limbs. It was to remind Adam and Eve, as they ever see the snake here on out, remind them of their sins. Just like our scars that we have, that we've, of our foolishness in the past. But this is the great blessing, is that Jesus comes and he shows also that, that serpent the defeat of Satan, that Satan cannot win. He'll deceive, he's a liar, and he'll tempt us, and we'll be led astray, but Jesus comes to crush his head. Satan will strike his heel on the cross, but he'll be victorious. And of course, you know the rest of the chapter, now we're on our own. We want to be going through that door. We didn't take God seriously or His goodness. And now we have to find our own way. But you know what God does in the end of that chapter? He clothed Adam and Eve. He clothed them. He didn't say, good luck, make your own clothes. They tried with little fig leaves, as we see. But He actually clothed them and gives them the promise, I will be there for you. Romans talks about that. That clothe yourself with Jesus Christ and not give in to desires of your physical flesh. This past week at God's will, a young couple came in, have no church background whatsoever. But the three-year-old little girl, they want to have a great education and they know we're number one in Prescott Valley with child care. And then she, she wanted to see the church. We brought her to the church. She knows nothing. She goes, now where do I, how do I dress? Where do I walk down which aisle? And I go, you know what? It doesn't matter. We're a family of God and we're on a journey learning and growing. We don't have rules. We have God's love and there we'll help you and welcome you and we'll guide you in. And she wants to learn the mom and dad with the daughter. One is going to learn here. So today we rejoice. Is that, yeah, we always go through that door or we disrespect God's relationship. But God doesn't disrespect us. He saves us through His Son and then He clothes us daily. Every time we pray, we hear His precious message of His gospel. So today, you're not alone. Jesus Christ will clothe you each day and enjoy his warmth in a very difficult world in Jesus' name.